Exactly. Bring it on. Bring it on. Let me ask you both. Um, so John, to start with you, you're, you're quite a political figure, aren't you? I was surprised to, to read about all that. You take politics pretty seriously. I think everybody should take politics seriously, no matter what your beliefs are, no matter if you're left, right, middle, don't know what you are. I think politics, you have to know what people stand for. You have to go vote. Um, my whole thing is go vote. You know, I believe what I believe. Other people believe what they believe. But at the end of the day, you have to go vote. We had a whole show yesterday about um, bankers and what happened in the financial crisis and how mm -hmm. they've all been just giving themselves bonuses the first chance they got. What do you think of that? Well, uh, not real impressed with that. You know, I actually wrote a song that says uh, it talks about in the real world people are losing their jobs, but in this in this make-believe world over here, they can still bonus themselves when everybody else is just getting slaughtered out here. And, um, you know, I play concerts all around the United States, and you see people scraping together money for weeks and weeks to get a concert ticket to come have a good time with their family and to think that, you know, there's guys out bonusing themselves and getting on their G5 and going to the Bahamas is a pretty sickening thought, actually. I, I, I don't like it at all. Marty, what do you hope this show will do for you? I would hope that it would give me the recognition of showing who I am in real life, being, you know, Marley Matlin, the deaf actress all my life who won an Oscar for Children of the of God, and there you go. I mean, I want to go beyond the stereotype of who I am as a deaf person, as a person who can do anything, anything, except here. And Joel, what do you think? I think there's a stereotype that comes with cowboy hats. Uh, I think there's a stereotype, you know, with little John that comes with a guy with baggy pants and, a, and gold teeth. Um, I think one great thing that's happened this season is some stereotypes have been successfully broken down. And, you know, everybody comes from a different place. They look like what they look like. They believe what they believe. But we all have heart and soul, and we all care about our charities. And at the end of the day, I do believe that's where we all come together on the same page. A lot of difficult questions for you, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If you could live without one of two men, your husband or Jack, who would it be? <laughs> I've had my husband for 18 years. I've had four kids with him. I'm an extremely happily That's married woman. 25 years. I'd rather be without Jack <laughs> and keep my husband, Kevin. Thank you very much. You're out, Jack. <laughs> Come on, you just you just shot Jack on oh, the fire. fire. I tell you what, Jack, you know what you should do? What? You should just leave the set now. <laughs> you know, see what happens. <laughs> then you no. change your mind. No, there, there, it, clearly as an interpreter, people keep asking me that question. There is a business relationship that all deaf people have all the time when they go to work with an interpreter. And that's, that's what I hope this shows for people who are deaf, that they need interpreters to go in. It's not an advantage. And that it's accessibility, um, it's the ramp, it's the braille, it's an interpreter, and it's an important role. And I'm glad that the show and the producers were kind enough to highlight that. I'm, they were very, very accommodating when it came to understanding the role of an interpreter. They got it like that. And, you know, what it's like two plus two equals four. They got it, it made, and they made it work. How do your really children nice. deal with it? You mean deal with what, my celebrity or my deafness? Or with my the going deafness away? and the sign language. And how, how do you converse with them? They, they don't know any other way. They don't know any other way. I mean, they were born into a, 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 you know, a family where the mother is deaf. They don't Can know they what all do the sign language? They sign if they feel like it. They sign if they feel like it. If they don't want to listen to their mother, they don't bother, right? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's actually a good point. Um, <laughs> they, can, you know, they, if they can see my sign language. I have to be careful when I'm, when I'm talking. But when they go to friends' houses with hearing parents, um, I'll say, how did it feel? And they say, what do you mean, how did it feel? To have people who can hear around me, it's, it's no big deal. It's just different. So, I mean, that's what it is. Mom is this way, their, their parents are this way. It's just what they were born into. And John, in the middle of all this, Donald Trump was rumored to be planning a run for the presidency. What do you think President Trump would have been like for this country? I would have liked to have seen him in a debate. Uh, I'm disappointed that I don't get to see him in a debate. You know, he, he has autonomy in his business. He's Donald Trump, and he runs the Trump Organization. And I really wanted to see him go head-to-head -head with other candidates and put him out there in the mix and see what he brought to the table, but we'll never see that. Well, I don't know about you, Marty, but I was incredibly impressed by Donald Trump in the boardroom scenes of The Apprentice. I mean, these go on that was my favorite. That was my favorite part of the show, the boardroom. I always look forward to People were afraid, and they would walk and pace, and I said, no, no, I, when are we going to the boardroom? I love to see the debate. I love to see how he watched people, how he made decisions. He's a smart guy that way. In that aspect, he's very smart. I really, really enjoyed the boardroom. It was my favorite part of the room. He used to play it like a viola, didn't he? I mean, he, he, he had no notes. 
He had a briefing, but he would jump. Play the violin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good. But he would he would just run the whole thing brilliantly. I remember thinking it's why I, I'm a big fan of it because I can see it at first hand for hours on end. He does his homework. He really yeah. does. What you're doing here is like a conductor, and that's exactly what he feels like. Is like he's conducting an orchestra, and then it really is. It really is impressive how he can ask a question and get uh, the information out of everybody. And both uh, Ivanka and Donald Trump Jr. are reflections of him because they're both brilliant, brilliant people. Mm -hmm. And I was really impressed. And if they were my kids, I'd be very proud of them mm -hmm. because to work with their, I mean, their input was invaluable. And I was very impressed. Before we go, I want to play one last clip. It's the moment that you discover that you've made it to the final. <laughs> I need a hug. I'm giving you a hug right here. So happy. Happy to Wow. Okay. Congratulations. You're my final two. And this was not easy. This was a rough one. What do you think, Marley? You know, I'm stunned, but I'm more eager to roll up my sleeve and just jump in it and see what you got from She's got plenty of energy. What do you think, John Rich? I, I've admired her since day one, and I love Marley's tenacity, and yet her ability to remain respectful to everyone, but still be strong. To me, that is the fine line you walk. Well, it's going to be very interesting, because as project managers, you've opposed each other twice. You've won one, Marley's won one. So you're one and one. The final I'm going to give you tomorrow. It's going to be an amazing task. One of you will become the Celebrity Apprentice. I love, I love the way you hugged each other there. Because when I was in that moment with Trace Acton, my exact, <laughs> my exact words were, were, you're going down, cowboy. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. It, I mean, a bit more friendly. Now this, we both have mutual respect for each other. And this is the, since first yeah, but let's day just, one. Let's cut the crap, shall we? You both want okay. to kill each other you in the final, right? Hey. Yeah, Marty said, yeah, okay. You Shut suck, Marty. Careful, you, want to, get you, want to, <laughs> you want to kill each other in the final, don't you? Uh, I don't know, but I don't think we want to kill each other, but I want to win. I want to win bad. And, I'm going to win, too. And, and I, I, you know, I think neither one of us are going to tell you exactly what we're going to say. And I think it's going to depend on what Mr. Trump asks, but you know, I'm sure you have a plan. I know I know what I'm going to say, and we're going to go in there, and it's going to be a, it's well, going to be one hell of a I, race. I can't call this, and I'm normally pretty good at calling them these things. I think you've got very, very tough lady here, ice cool cowboy here. Anything can happen. The beneficiary that we know for sure will be the two charities. You raised nearly two million dollars—an incredible achievement. I take my if I had a hat, I take it off you, John <laughs> and you, Marty. Both. Good luck. Thank you. May the best man stroke woman win, and I'll be watching. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. When we come back, I'll be with a TV legend, Dick Van Dyke. The dives, the swerves.